In this video, we'll explore more deeply how scientists measure the processes C and S. As a reminder, process C is a circadian rhythm in alertness, or its opposite, sleepiness, and process S is the homeostatic or sleep pressure system. And together, they help determine when you're alert and when you sleep. Before watching this video, if you have not watched the two process model of sleep video produced by the BioClock Studio, we recommend you do so for an overview of processes C and S. Thinking about the two process model, you might wonder how scientists are able to distinguish process C and process S in people. Because they normally interact, can they be measured separately in the same person? In order to find out, we will take a look at two different research papers in two videos. This video will cover process C by examining a paper by Dr. Perez Labi. The title of the paper is Ultra Short Sleep Waking Schedule 3 Gates and Forbidden Zones for Sleep. Dr. Labi's ultra short experimental protocol was designed to eliminate sleep pressure, process S. So the timing and the amount of sleep individuals got reflected process C only. Although he conducted three slightly different experiments with a similar protocol, we'll be focusing on just one. In this study, participants were given a seven minute long sleep opportunity where they were encouraged to sleep in a quiet dark room. Then for the next 13 minutes, they were forced to be awake in the light. This cycle, was repeated ceaselessly for the whole 36-hour study period. This kind of study design is called a napping protocol. Using polysonography, a laboratory technique to measure sleep and its stages, Labi measured the actual amount of time the participants slept during each 7-minute sleep opportunity. He also measured their sleep stages. This graph um, illustrates some of the findings. For our purposes in this video, we don't need to know what stages of sleep participants went into during sleep, so we'll show a simplified version of this graph just to illustrate its main points. The 36 hours of the study are shown on the x-axis. Starting in the late morning, and the y-axis shows the number of minutes the participants went to sleep during each 7-minute sleep opportunity, on average. So the higher the bar, the more time the participants spent sleeping at that time. So this is process C's effect on sleep, average over several people in the study. We can see that there is a rhythm in what is called sleep propensity. which is, there are certain times of day where people are more likely to sleep than others. This point here. Now, let's look at the results from a single participant. In this figure, we're measuring the same thing, just in a single person. And we've done the same thing just simplified it to focus on an overall rhythm without considering sleep stages. Note that the x-axis shows a slightly different time frame here, so starting earlier in the morning this time. Looking at this participant's rhythm of sleep, there's an interesting point right here around 1900 or 7 p.m. As you can see, the participant was not able to go to sleep at all here. This point is known as the forbidden zone for sleep, or the wake maintenance zone. Thinking about the two process model for a moment, the existence of this forbidden zone maps onto the peak in your daily alertness rhythm. This helps explain why you're not exhausted from sleep pressure in the few hours before your bedtime. Shortly after the forbidden zone, the participant suddenly was able to sleep again, this point here. This period where the participant could fall asleep easily again right after a period of high alertness is known as a gate for sleep.
Likewise, we see quick drops in alertness after its peak in the two process sleep model. Here. What Dr. Lavi's paper illustrates is that this is mainly due to the circadian process, or process C, which is regulating and oscillating the sleepiness independent of the sleep pressure. To sum up, let's go back to the simplified figure with the data from everyone in the study. Now that we understand the concepts of the forbidden zone and the sleep gate, we can understand this figure better. On this graph, we can see that around 1900, the participants on average are in their forbidden zone, as they're sleeping the least here. After this point though, participants on average are likely to be able to fall asleep again. And we now know that this is due to the gate control by process C. Intuitively, this makes sense as most people are comfortable sleeping between about 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. And it looks sort of like the process C rhythm you've seen before, doesn't it? Note though that the red graph represents alertness while Lavi's figure is sleepiness. This becomes easier to see if we take the image of the process C alerting signal and flip it briefly, like this. And then put the participant data of the sleepiness rhythm behind it. So the take-home message from Dr. Lavi's paper is that by frequently alleviating sleep pressure with naps, so process S remains constant, it is possible to measure the influence of the circadian oscillator or process C and how it helps determine when we sleep. To learn more about how scientists can measure both process C and S at the same time, check out the second video in the series, Studying Process C and S Part 2, Force Desynchrony.